chapter one. When does your story begin? I thought my story began when I was nine or ten years old. At that time, my parents loved hosting family and friends at our house in the suburbs of Walsall, a town in the centre of England. I remember that whenever people visited, whether I had met them already or not, I would be incredibly shy and scared to talk with them. I would stand there, not answering questions and staring at my feet. My parents commented on this, telling me, boys aren't shy, but I couldn't help how I felt. So I took that on as my personality. I was forever more a shy person. I thought my story started there and carried on through my teenage years into my 20s, when I discovered the self-help and personal development world. Then, by taking deliberate steps outside of what many would describe as my comfort zone, I started to show up more confidently in life, both personally and professionally. This wasn't a dramatic change, but one that seemed to involve numerous small steps over many years. If you had told me back then that one day I would write a book about my journey, I would have guessed it would contain the step-by-step -step path I took from shy boy to confident adult. However, a few years ago, I had a revelatory insight that showed me my story didn't start when I was nine or 10 years old. In fact, it began much earlier. What happened was that I suddenly recalled a memory of an event that had taken place when I was far younger in Mumbai, India. My family and I had gone to visit our relatives. One day we were at my uncle's apartment. He lived in a colony, which is a group of tall apartment buildings surrounded by a wall. While I was visiting my uncle, he took me to another apartment in the colony to meet his friend. My memory is a little hazy, but I remember meeting a young lady there who was perhaps in her late teens or early twenties. In an innocent, childlike way, I remember that I liked her and decided that she was now my friend. After meeting her, my uncle and I walked back to his apartment. A little while later, as we were getting ready to leave, my sister and I were given some sweets by my uncle as a parting gift. I distinctly remember refusing to leave unless I could share my sweets with my new friend. My family tried in vain to convince me that the sweets were mine, but I wouldn't have it. I forced my uncle to march me across to my new friend's apartment so I could share my sweets with her. I remember feeling so excited as I waited for her to open the door. She was really surprised when we turned up. There was such joy in her eyes when this small child told her he wanted to share his sweets with her. In that moment, I certainly wasn't shy. I didn't lack confidence. I didn't have a problem connecting with women and I certainly wasn't over analyzing the situation. I was my true self, unfiltered. I was free of all the mistaken beliefs about who I was, the ones I picked up in subsequent years. In these pages, I share insights and stories that I hope will help you remember who you are once you drop your own false beliefs, misconceptions and misunderstandings and to understand the value of this remembering. It frees you up to live without your insecurities and doubts holding you back. It helps you return to the state of childlike creativity, playfulness and joy we all once had. One is never quite sure what will make this new understanding click. I have found it useful on my own journey to gently reflect on the many areas of our lives where it comes into play, namely everywhere. This is what we'll do in this book. If it seems on occasion that we've already touched on a particular issue, I invite you to reflect on it anew. Oftentimes, when we look at the same or similar problems from different angles, we nurture a deeper understanding that leads to growth. I have spent some 18 years exploring self-development and learning from the best teachers, mentors, and coaches on the planet, 
as well as coaching others towards the insights in this book. I'm also simply a guy whose experience of life was pretty average at best, but who underwent some pretty huge transformations as I began to understand what I share with you in the following pages. The extent of these changes has been miraculous to me. Before them, I simply could not imagine enjoying life as much as I do now. But this book isn't really about my transformation. Rather, it's about remembering who I really was back then and who I always have been, for that matter. This remembering is possible for everyone. When does your story begin? Our minds are full of personal stories. In many ways, when you listen to our conversations, to our spoken words with people, you hear these stories over and over. And I don't know whether you found that you have stories about you that you tell over and over and over. I realized recently I had a story about being arrogant. Now, in many ways, I was what well, I suppose what would be classed quite confident when I was younger. And sometimes uh, I would be told, oh, oh, you're arrogant, you're being arrogant. And it wasn't until really, really recently that I realized that that's just not how it looks to me. I don't see it like that. I've heard other people say it, but I've also heard people say, no, actually, you can be really humble and you have a really interesting, often direct, but very interesting way of looking at the world. So what does that tell us? Well, I think it tells us that we all see the world in certain ways. And the way we see the world, the way we see each other, definitely the way we see ourselves, can change over time. And the more we see that, the more we see that we're living in an ever-changing experience of ourselves, those around us, and the world we live in, the more we get a sense of what changes and what's more fixed. Now, our challenges really start to come when we see our identity, who we are, as fixed. I'm this kind of person. I'm that kind of person. Those things aren't available to me. I'm not able to do that. They can do that, but I could never do that. Those kind of fixed stories. And when we're stuck in that rut, life can get challenging and it can feel hard and difficult and just not pleasant at all. But the more this understanding that we're looking at within this book starts to just gently sink in, the more I think you're going to realize that those stories have less grip. That while somebody might tell you that you are arrogant or you're shy or you speak up too much or you don't speak up enough, those things are really just temporary viewpoints. There isn't really any solidity to them at all, even if we've heard them for many, many years. So during your reflections on chapter one, just ponder on that. Think about which stories you tell yourself over and over. Look for where they began and look for the fact that maybe they're not true at all. See you next time.